The liquid crystal display. It's always inspired me. This is a celebration of LCD. The first ones, the unusual ones. And some explaining of the technology. What are we actually looking at? I'll keep the history short because it's complex and quite boring, frankly. So, the liquid crystal was first discovered in 1888 by Friedrich Reinitzer. The next 80 years, research was done by many people until George Hellmeyer and his team created the first LCD. From there, it took a couple more years and in 1972, the first LCD products hit the market. Like this watch. This is a DSM LCD, Dynamic Scattering Mode Liquid Crystal Display. When you see the display clearly like this, you may think, why did I change it to this? Well, I've been filming it in perfect light conditions. What looks like black hair is really a mirror. So why would I make a display a mirror? To understand that, I need to explain how it works. Using a subwoofer, obviously. The molecules in a substance usually are oriented quite randomly, like here. But in a crystal, they point the same way, like this. An orientation like this shouldn't be possible in a liquid, but in a liquid crystal, it is possible. And look what happens when we apply power to our liquid crystal. The molecules stop moving around and all order is gone. And with power off again, the molecules revert back. So with power applied, the crystal's molecules scatter the light. If you get close enough, you can see the scattering in action. Noise. You could compare it with boiling water versus still water. But at a much smaller scale. Clear tape versus diffuse tape. Crystal clear, crystal diffused. If you wouldn't use a mirror, it would be hardly visible. Let's go closer and slow down the speed. This light scattering is happening inside the crystal, not on the surface. Let's take a moment. investigate this further. How about a calculator? I actually own this one. Way cheaper than a watch. Sharp named it a COS LCD, crystal on substrate. But it's really also a DSM LCD. The hood is there for practical reasons. It's black from the inside, so you can't see anything reflect. And the window here lets light through for the light scattering. With the right light, it can actually outperform its 90s grandson. But don't be misled, this display too reflects like a mirror. Except where the crystal scatters the light. So, uh. How did they do it? A cranky. Ah. We start with two glass plates. In between goes our blob liquid crystal. Now we add a layer of transparent conductive material to one of the glass plates in the desired shape. They connect to the sides, where the power connections are. 
the other glass plate also has a conductive transparent layer. And that completes the circuit. And for the best light scattering, we add a mirror. Every digit has its own mirror. Such an elegant design. lights. This reveals irregularities. And it looks nice. This unit has passed the test of time well. After all, it's 45 years old. Ik ben een debiel. Nice. With the cap removed and miraculously my hand not cut, we can take a much better look at the display. Don't worry, this is a second unit. In this device the liquid crystal has begun to dry out. Now with the light fully reflecting we can nicely see the conductive top layer. It's the lighter area outside the numbers that conducts and makes up the digits as well while the mirror on the bottom defines the outer edges and completes the circuit. A bigger advantage of the cap removed is that I can now go super micro. Let's take a moment to stare in awe at its magnificence. get enough of that. To give an indication of how close that was, this is one millimeter. Unfortunately, we've reached the limit. But let's just push the limit a little further. It's quite difficult to get a grasp on what we're seeing here. But one thing is for certain, we're not seeing the individual molecules. Even this close, you can't possibly see that. But it certainly is beautiful. Are you still with me? You've been staring at a calculator screen for almost four minutes now. These are Williams domains. A state that appears when the current is lower, caused here by current leakage. Wouldn't it be cool if we could put a light behind the LCD? Oh wait, we can. And they did. This is not just one of the first LCDs. It's also one of the first backlit LCDs. It's 46 years old. 1973. Its liquid crystal has also begun to dry out. 
the unfortunate faith that all DSM LCDs will face someday. But what's nice about old stuff is that you can do this. Disassemble while it keeps functioning. And here is our fully transparent display with light scattering digits. The backlit system works like this. A bulb guided by a piece of acrylic, shining it back down on the display and a mirror on the button to duplicate the effect. And voila, a backlit LCD. Here's the conductive layers. And here's an interesting fix. So, now that we can backlit, it actually looks the same. But I want to show you one last thing. How about speeding it up? Notice how the pattern disappears and changes into pure noise. I just have one last question. Why don't they make these displays anymore? Can you imagine what beautiful devices could be made with this? Like a truly transparent clock. Or an actual mirror with the clock in it. Plenty of beautiful applications. Well, there are two reasons why they stopped making it after only two years. During filming of that sharp calculator, I had to recharge the four AA batteries two times. So the DSM LCD is quite power hungry. But the main reason is the TN LCD. I'll talk about that in the next video. Anyway, that wraps it up for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll promise it won't take six months for the next video, but only two weeks. Oh, that's quite a promise. By the way, if you're an LCD manufacturer, make sure to make DSM LCDs again because they're awesome. I have to go. Ha, 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 ha.